At this point we've created an invoice, and now we can step forward with the job, and we do that by hitting Next. And this will actually create an invoice here on our device to present to the customer, but it will also sh show up back inside Successware, so the office staff can now see a copy of our invoice. And at this point it brings us to an authorization screen, where we can show the invoice to the customer to get their authorization. The authoriz authorization screen has our logo at the top, it has the customer information below that, it has the work suggested and work done notes, it has the all the line items we've added onto the invoice with their prices, then it has the subtotal, the tax, the total of our discount, and the ultimate total for the customer. And then lastly, if we put any content blocks on the invoice, those are going to show up right here as well. And once we're ready, you'll see down at the bottom that there's a note telling you to rotate it so that the customer can sign. So you take the phone and you rotate it horizontally and it loads up a signature screen and you capture a signature from the customer and hit authorize. Once you're done you can turn the phone back to portrait to begin to work through the call. And at this point it brings us through to our step 5 payment screen. And this is where we could go through and enter in payment information. So if there's a balance or a deposit on the account, we can add or subtract it to the invoice right here. Also, if you scroll down, you'll see that the, the, there's the charges information as well. So you have the total of the invoice, the total due, as well as the payment amount down here. Payment amount can be changed to be anything up to the full amount of the invoice. And then you can go through and select your payment types. With your payment types, for example, you could select check and this will then enable you to put a check number and signature name in. Or you may select credit card and then this will load up fields where you can go through and enter in credit card information. If you have a credit card swipe, you can plug it right into the headphone jack and click the swipe button and swipe a credit card. If not, you may type in the card information, including the name, the card type, the card number, and the expiration. Or you may select from other payment methods by hitting the other checkbox. And this is where you can go through and select from the other methods that you guys might have on file. Other methods could be bank draft, cash, finance, any of those types of information. Once you select your other payment method, it would ask you for a reference number and you would plug that in. Now to go back to payment type for this job, I'm going to put in a check. So let's select check. And then we can scroll down and plug in the check number and signature name. The signature name is typically the name that shows up on the check. And at this point you can hit next and the check policy will pop up. You can simply click yes past the check policy and you'll now have a payment review to present to the customer. This is the same invoice we were looking at before, but now there will be payment information on it as well. So if you scroll down you'll see some payment information. And once you're ready you can rotate it to the side present it to the customer and allow them to approve the work to be completed. And then you click the approve button. And then you can go back to turning the phone to portrait mode. At this point we can also put our parts in as well. So you'll see down at the bottom there's a notes and parts. Those two buttons are here throughout the rest of the call. So if you ever need to go in and add notes or parts, we could do that throughout the rest of the application by hitting either one of these buttons. For right now let's hit parts and this is where we can go through and add parts onto the job. With SW Remote, you assign parts to a task that you have on file. Once you select the parts button, it will load up the task that you have added to the invoice. And then you may click on one of those tasks to, to then go through and add in the part that you used on the task. If there's any parts assigned to the task, they're all automatically going to show up right here. If you don't have any parts assigned to the task, you can go through and add them. And you could do that by hitting the scan button and scanning a barcoded parts list or hitting the add button and finding the item either through the catalog or by doing the search. With parts I find that it's easier to sometimes do the search. So for example if I was looking for maybe Freon I can type in Freon and hit search and any item that has something close to that Freon in it whether it be the item number or the description is going to show up right here. So I can select the appropriate part, change the quantity, 
and then hit save. And that is how I add a part onto the job. I can go through and add additional parts if I need to. And once I'm done, I hit the done button and that will save the parts on file. It brings me back to the task groups. I can hit exit and it'll bring me back to where I was on the job. Now at this point, we're at step six, which is the job debrief. This is where we can go through and enter in our debrief items. So for example, was there an agreement opportunity? You can check that off if there's an opportunity to sell an agreement. Maybe there's an opportunity for lead generated or opportunity generated. You can select either one of those off. And then it will allow you to select from specific opportunity codes that you have on file. This will then create an opportunity or a lead based on that code that you have selected. Typically the difference between lead generated and opportunity generated is this. Opportunities are areas where you spoke to the customer about a specific item and there's an opportunity there. Lead is typically where you've called the office and you have scheduled a lead for somebody to come out to that customer and speak to them about it. But again, please follow up with your office on how, how those things are handled for your company. In addition to putting in opportunities, we can go down and, and put in additional stuff such as warranty opportunity or warranty sold. Replacement opportunity or replacement sold. With both replacement sold, it asks you for the amount of the replacement or with warranty sold, it asks you for the amount of the warranty that you sold. So you need to plug those, that information in accordingly. On top of just the opportunities, you also have the ability to enter in job data information. If told to do so, you can edit things such as the total ticket, the money task count, diagnostic only, and no charge. After you're done putting that information in, you can scroll down a little bit further and take a look at some of the call type information. This is where we can go through and select the call type for the call. Whether it be a warranty call, a contract call, a non-contract call, or lastly a callback. If we check off callback, this will prompt us with the service history for the location and allow us to check off for which call it is a callback. After you've identified specifically what type of call type it is, we can get ready to close up the debrief. At this point, this is a good time for us to send along the 10-8 notifier. And we do that by hitting the 10-8 button at the top. This will let dispatch know we're almost done with our call and they can call ahead and confirm our next call for us. And at this point, we hit next and it brings us through to the final step, which is step, step seven, complete assignment. This will bring us through to our final step, which is step seven, complete assignment. This is where we have a full invoice here in front of us with all the information on the invoice, all the payment information, as well as those two signatures that we have captured from the customer. Once we're ready, we can hit the send receipt button and this will load up with the email address on file for the customer. If we don't have an email address on file for the customer, we can enter one in that we want to send the invoice to right here. And then you click OK. Or if you want to save the email address on file for the customer, you would hit the customer button at the top, go back to the location information, which is the tab over there, and then hit the edit button and go down and edit in the email address right here. And then save that information. And then we hit the progress button and we head back to our call progress. After we have sent an invoice off to the customer, we can click the finish button and that will close our call. This will now show back inside Successware that we have completed our call. And if we have another call assigned to us, it'll ask us if we'd like to dispatch on to our next call. And we can just continue on our way. If you do not have another call assigned to you, it will load up with a time card status screen here allowing you to select from specific time card statuses for what you're doing at the moment. And you do this based on the different time card statuses that they have back in file in the office. So if you're around waiting for your next call, you can do available on and click set. And this will leave you on the, on the call board waiting for your next call. And as soon as your next call pops up, it'll show up right here on the device. And that is how you work through a call as if you're a service tech using the iPhone or Android phone version of the software. Thank you and have a good day.